welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tamne Bakshi and this time we're going to be going over, well, actually a new series uh, that we're calling AI Cafe. Uh, in fact, you may remember uh, this here is my mentor, Thierry, joining us, our first guest on the AI Cafe series. Uh, I actually created a video with him and one of my other mentors, Timothy Duncan, uh, some, some time ago about artificial intelligence and Ivan Watson. Uh, so that was really, really interesting, but luckily he's back in Toronto and we're able to make another video. Uh, and this time we're going to be talking about something really fundamental uh, with artificial intelligence, which is the fact that pattern detection, um, without it, artificial intelligence is not artificial intelligence. Uh, so Thierry, would you like to just quickly introduce yourself and sort of talk about uh, yes. what, we're, what, what we're discussing today? Absolutely, yes. My name is Thierry Hubert. I'm the CEO of Darwin Ecosystem, and uh, Tenmi and I have been working for a little while together. We, uh, we're having fun, actually, with pattern detection, and in fact, AI without pattern detection is just not AI. Exactly. And we're going to change things now, right? Exactly. We're going to, we're going to talk about it. We're going, to, we're going to, to have one of those conversations that doesn't involve a keyboard. <laughs> it's kind of human, and we're talking about neural networks, pattern detection, what it means and whatnot, mm -hmm. and uh, how useful is it, but, but fundamentally, let me understand that it is the core, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Right? Without, without pattern detection, there's no point to AI in the first place. That's right. And, and it even goes deeper than that. And, and this is what's going to be fun about this, this new series, Cafe, right? Yes. Is that, is that we can talk about it and, and we could have a cafe along yeah. the way. In this case, we, we're going to turn this guy on <laughs> and, and allow the analog device to get our life, right? And like the other analog device, which is our brain. Mm -hmm. And so fundamental to pattern detection is our ability to, as humans, or any, any cognitive organism for that matter, mm -hmm. to detect patterns. And exactly. patterns create memories, right? Exactly. And then when the pattern changes, what happens? Well, you're, you're startled. You say, what's happening? Exactly. exactly. And that's the biggest thing. So I've got a pattern that changes. What's happening? Exactly. Well, isn't that what people are trying to really find out? Isn't that what makes us aware exactly. of our environment? Exactly. Right? It's completely agree. So isn't it fun to think that actually today we have technology with AI that is based on that fundamental belief, or that fundamental principle, I should say, and we have to believe in it, right? But it's yeah. a fundamental principle yeah. that in fact, a pattern, mm -hmm. when we absorb, when we move through life, mm -hmm. or when a system moves through data, exactly. right? We observe pattern, and the beauty with the neural network and AI is that as we move through the data, or as we move through life, we remember Exactly. Right, and we observe that there is that there is a reoccurring pattern, and what's interesting about it is that if it's reoccurring, it's soothing. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And yeah. and, and it doesn't matter who you are. That's yeah. how you learn. Mm -hmm. And then you, but what happens when the pattern always occurs and it's always the same pattern over? It's boring. Exactly. Nobody cares. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Right? Exactly. What you expect it is what you know. Exactly. Exactly. Right? exactly. So, so we we can we can go and talk about this about the value of it, how it how it plays in technology. If you want. You know, bring the analogy around the neural network, around the wonderful work that you do, or some of the projects we work on, around the cognitive projects. But besides that project alone, you know, yeah, how do you <laughs> say, okay, great, I'm dealing with that, I was neural network. <laughs> how do you bring it in to a point where people understand, and how can you express it? Say, no, no, really, what we're doing here is pattern detection. Exactly. So exactly. take take that one on. I'm gonna sure. say you go for this one, and then we'll figure out what we do with it. Perfect. All right. Okay. Uh, so now imagine this. So I mean, one of the projects that, of course, we're actually collaborating on uh, is called the Cognitive Story. You may have heard of it before. Uh, it's basically a project where our first goal. I mean, generally, we're trying to use AI to enhance people's lives. But our first goal uh, is to actually help out a quadriplegic girl named Boo who lives just north of Toronto. Uh, so as I mentioned, she's quadriplegic. Unfortunately. She's suffers from Rett syndrome, meaning she cannot communicate whatsoever. If she's, you know, thirsty or hungry or wants to go to the washroom, uh, her mom has to make a, a sort of good, informed guess Correct. as to what Boo is trying oh, to talk why? About. So there you go. So why does she, can she make a guess? Because she's able to recognize those patterns. There you go. Exactly. That's it. And so what we're trying to do, though, is see, how can we unlock more data to gather patterns from? What Boo's mom is looking at while she's trying to understand what Boo's talking about is she's saying, okay, how is Boo moving? What's the time of the day? What's the context? What's the situation like? She's looking at all these different variables, which might indicate towards what Boo's trying to mention. 
-hmm. And these are the different types of patterns that she's recognizing. But there are lots of more patterns that she as a human cannot recognize because us humans are sometimes biased towards simple, repeatable patterns. Correct. We can't look through vast amounts of complex noise and noisy data and say, hey, this is a pattern. Correct. But artificial neural networks can. And so that's why we're actually trying to use electroencephalogram headsets uh, mm -hmm. and deep learning algorithms to actually recognize uh, patterns in Boo's EEG brainwaves when she's trying to answer a question and see if we can convert those brainwaves to actual intent or what she wants to do. And that's a perfect example of how we're actually detecting quite literally patterns in her brainwaves. Correct. Even though it's so noisy, these neural networks have relatively an easy time finding patterns in such noisy and vast amounts of data because they're able to see repeatable yet changing patterns throughout all the data. That's exactly right. And what's fascinating when you bring it in that context is saying, okay, so the technology is reading a signal that us as humans are not capable of reading. Exactly. So you're complementing, and what I love in what you said is that you're complementing what we call the, if you want, the, uh, the person, who, the intimate interpreter is what we call her in yes. our research, right? So mom is the intimate interpreter. And you say, the day, the, if it's daytime, uh, if, depending on the weather, depending on a whole bunch of vectors exactly. whole, uh, that she's observed, she's able to correlate them and says, oh, and observing your child exactly. based on the patterns of knowing how she behaves, if she grunts, if she looks exactly. a certain way, she knows it. But what's beautiful about, about the project is that now we're saying patterns we don't see, the computer can see. Exactly. Huh? exactly. And then it brings them in and it adds a new dimension, mm -hmm. right? And then when the pattern is different, when the pattern changes, let's say in conjunction with her wanting to eat, mm -hmm. her being, um, you know, not being comfortable, or exactly. wanting to watch a TV and somebody's in the way, like it happened last oh, night, yeah. remember? Yeah, when I, remember, I was there, I it's like she's, there was a reaction. That, in conjunction with the data, mm -hmm. gives us the ability to take that cognitive component that we all take for granted, mm -hmm and put it in a system that can assist her. Exactly. That's the augmentation right exactly. there, right? And plus, the thing is, uh, we humans, of course, we're great at detecting patterns, right? Mm -hmm. We are very, very good at detecting patterns. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing is, us humans are sometimes limited. Correct. We're limited by the amount of data that we can take in and how we can take in that data. We humans are only good at taking in data with you know, the senses that we have. Right? Mm -hmm. we, can take in we can take in visual data really, really easily. Right. Right. We can take an auditory data really, really easily. Uh, if I were to show you basically a list of numbers, you would never understand it. I mean, you know, eventually if you were to try your best to visualize in your head, you would understand it. But it's so much easier for me to show you a graph. Correct. And you will immediately understand some naive patterns in the data. But the thing is, when we're dealing with something as complex as EEG brainwaves, we cannot do that. We cannot have you just look at a graph of the EEG brainwaves and say, okay, do you see a pattern in these? No. Because the fact that they're so complex, they are literally dependent on each of all the individual data points to find patterns. And that's exactly correct. And this is the correlation that gives it sense. Exactly. Right? Because I can look at a pattern, I, can, I may not be able to recognize it, but when I see a change, if I cannot correlate it with something else, exactly. it's meaningless. Exactly. So, when, so, so you take this in the context of business and market fluctuation and whatnot, and when we use all these wonderful techniques to do pattern detection, we are looking at, the, at, at single streams of data, exactly. different vectors, mm -hmm. right? And we're saying, well, what are the patterns? So the system can learn the yeah. pattern, exactly. right? Exactly. And, and it's create, what it creates an aggregate. It creates a collective, I would say, set of neural pathways, mm -hmm. right, in yeah, a way, absolutely. and patterns. Absolutely. And then we're looking at this and say, okay, well, something changes. Mm -hmm. absolutely. So what, should, what happens next? Exactly. When exactly. a pattern changes, what happens next? And that's what people in business usually mm -hmm. look for. In mm -hmm. business intelligence, yeah. your competitors, for instance, a pattern, right? I look every day on Twitter at my competitors, <laughs> right? I have a little signal, and all of a sudden there's a little more noise about my competitor. Yeah. Well, that's meaningful. Exactly. But if I didn't know to look for more noise, or that I didn't know, I didn't, uh, did not understand the actual pattern, how would I have been awarded to what I don't know? Exactly. Right? Exactly. And that's where it's beautiful. That's, that's the trigger. Exactly. Right? So now we can do it with more things than just the limitation of your physicality and my physicality in the same room. Exactly. Right? Exactly. A bird would show up over here, it would be a disruption to the pattern, we exactly. would share it. Exactly. But then if you were standing over there. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Right? exactly. So the systems unify that mm -hmm. and proves decision dramatically. Completely, completely. Right? 
In fact, the, the, the point is that artificial intelligence, because of the fact that it's running on technology, has some advantages that we humans can never have. Mm -hmm. Like when we're driving. Okay. This is basically a huge pattern recognition problem. Driving. Yes. A ginormous pattern recognition problem. And we do a good job at it. Right? Exactly. Some of us. I mean, we do, we do. We do it quite nicely. If we, do it, if we want to do it nicely, we can do it. We know how to do it. Right? We know. Yeah, exactly. But the thing is, driving is sometimes distracting for a human. Why? Because the thing is, our brains can only focus on so many things at once. Yes. Okay. Our brains can't focus at, on 50 things at once. We can look you know, in front of us, we can look in the rear view mirror, we can see other mirrors, we can see uh, what, what speed we're going, we can look at the GPS. So many things to look at, so many things to coordinate. Okay. And all humans do a pretty good job mm -hmm. at it, but this is where machines come in. Machines can drive cars so much better than us because they can take a look at all the data points make meaningful pattern recognition out of them. Yes. And then from there, take everything that it's seeing in conjunction and then make a decision. But because they have full attention. Exactly. They right. have full attention everywhere because they are capable of making full attention every single data point. Yeah, and you're right. And to go to your example, when somebody drives a car, they're used to seeing traffic around them. Exactly. They're used to seeing people. So exactly. they actually, it becomes subconscious in a way. Exactly. So they, their attention is only related to the immediate decision they have to make exactly. and if something interferes. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And systems are much more oh, open yeah. to the variables, much more, right? Much more. And this is interesting. Mm -hmm. But you see, this this is where I think that the conversation around pattern detection is very meaningful because when people people talk about AI, we talk about natural language processing. Oh yeah. yeah. And we know that's pattern detection yeah. as well. It it's arbitrary. Mm -hmm. I mean Think of it this way, the world around us, yeah. the world, the natural world, shows patterns. Lawrence oh, yeah. demonstrated it was the strange attractor where, you know, in a closed environment that is highly dynamic, we're able to observe patterns. Exactly. Well, it's no different. And this is one of the things I, I, I postulated on. Yes. There's no difference between the closed environment of nature mm -hmm. and the closed environment of human cognitive, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the information or the elements in that chaotic environment that yes. reveal patterns. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. And the computers now, because we capture so much of our information, because what is our information when we publish? It's an intent. Exactly. And we, exactly. we have an intent in order to, because we observe something and we yeah. want to communicate it, but we have an intent to achieve something. Exactly. That, that's why we put it in a digital format. Completely. Right? Especially with unstructured data. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What more wonderful thing to do mm -hmm. than capture the intents of human expression mm -hmm. and analyze the pattern, how concepts evolve in the company, a collective memory. Exactly. Can you exactly. imagine that? I mean, how cool is that? And, and this is the work we, we love to do. I'm going to take all the information you have. Mm -hmm. I'm going to slice it and correlate it and show the patterns of your content, show the story, your collective story. And what you said about the, the car example, yes. Is exactly the same because you're saying I'm now aware of everything. Or I'm not dismissing anything. And, and plus, the thing is, we're not just saying, okay, we were trained by this one driver, so this is now my driving style. What AI is able to do is it's able to take, mm -hmm. say, a uh, hundred drivers that it's learning from, or maybe two hundred, three hundred drivers. Yes. And each one collects, you know, hundreds of hours of driving data. We're not telling the machine, okay, if the road's curving, you know, these many degrees to the right, this is how you're going to turn the steering wheel. No. We're not, we exactly, yeah, we're literally teaching it. We're not right. telling it what to do. We're teaching it. We're giving it all the data from these drivers and we're saying learn how to drive. And it's able to generalize all those patterns. Mm -hmm. It's not learning one specific driving style. Like, for example, if you're a human, you're taught how to drive, you learn a specific driving style. Right. With AI, we can look at all these data points and find patterns among all of them and say, okay, this is the average way to drive, the proper way to drive. Uh, at least, this is how most humans will drive. And I think you're, I, you're right. I think you're right on. And this is why pattern detection is fundamental when we talk about artificial intelligence. Exactly. Because I mean, one thing people look at artificial intelligence with respect to human interface, right? Oh, yeah. If you can fool me, you know, to think that a computer can reason, and I can say, oh wow, this computer can reason, therefore it's artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. This is where people have fiction. They have dreams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so reality is it's much more oh, simple. So exactly. when we talk about this mm -hmm. and make. We demystify mm. for people what AI really is. Completely. Because we're telling them this is fundamental. This is exactly. a core organic property of any cognitive organism. Of and we can do the same thing with technology when exactly. we feed it data. Isn't that exactly. wonderful? It's absolutely wonderful. So when you take it from there, I mean, doesn't that simplify oh, yeah. the conversation oh, dramatically? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, you could just say that artificial intelligence, yeah. uh, it's basically just a huge pattern recognition problem in general. 
Yeah. We're trying to give it abstract and huge amounts of data. And we're trying to see how can we find a specific pattern in this that will allow us to achieve this end result. Uh, now, there are some really great examples of this, like, for example, the driving one that I mentioned. There's also things like uh, stock price prediction, gas price prediction. You know we play uh, with that, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really, really interesting because the AI yeah. doesn't just look at, okay, this is the pattern right now. What's the next stock price going to be? It says, okay, let's take a look at the entire history here and see when this similar type of pattern has happened, what usually happens after this? Bingo, what happened at the same time? <laughs> it's no longer a linear regression, exactly. right? Exactly. I mean, it's a lot more interesting, a lot more organic. Exactly. Because exactly. we know that the stock market is a human invention, oh, it's a human yeah. abstraction. Exactly. It, like for example, uh, with artificial intelligence, we're trying to emulate things like empathy in humans, Yeah. Uh, in, in, in computers, right? Right. Uh, which, regularly, computers, completely impossible. We cannot, Re emulate things like uh, what do you call it? sentiment? Sentiment. You right. cannot analyze the sentiment or but the personality. You can fake it, right? Emotion. You can fake it, but, <laughs> but still, <laughs> through AI though, yes. we can actually understand things like your personality. We can understand yes. the sentiment with which you're talking. Uh, like for example, mm -hmm. uh, let's just say that you're you know tweeting about something, and let's just say that your entire company is receiving millions, like hundreds of thousands of tweets. Right. Uh, now we're gonna filter through them. You say, okay. Well, this specific keyword, what's the sentiment attached to this keyword? Right. Without AI, we cannot detect that. No. Because that's, again, a huge pattern recognition problem. We're trying to recognize, okay, what types of patterns allow us to say, okay, the sentiment with this is positive or negative, or people are angry or people are fearful. And sense. you're right, and this is complex. And you, you've seen this before. You've seen people who do like sentiment analysis oh, on, yeah. on Twitter yeah. all the time. Right? Exactly. And what do they do? They simply use terms yeah. that they say this is positive, this is <laughs> negative. This is not AI. Uh, not this all, is no. so deterministic. It has yeah. no flexibility. And, and you'll know people will use certain language mm -hmm. if in a positive context okay. when the, for most of the people that language is unacceptable and seen as negative. Exactly. So exactly. how do you learn? How do you know? So you have to inject this ability in the system Absolutely. to learn and to give you insight. Completely. Right. And then from there, it's not just that one time learning. It is you learn once, you have base knowledge, now you're working on top of that and building more and more and more knowledge as you go. As you run inference, you're training more and more. You refine. Exactly. Is that as what you, you do drive. as human? Is that what, what you do as human? <laughs> exactly. Right. That is exactly what we do as okay. human. As you drive, okay, you're about to get into an accident. You learn from that. You learn that, okay, I shouldn't do this from now on, I should do this. Are you telling me time. that companies who invest in AI have to embrace the idea that it is good to observe mistakes? Absolutely. Bingo. You guys got that? <laughs> this is true, right? You have, it's a learning system. Exactly. It is, that's the beauty. I mean, think about it. You know, the, the, the projects around oncology oh, yeah. and healthcare, yeah. you know, helping diagnostics. Exactly. I mean, it's all pattern detection yeah. and validation by professional. Somebody asked me this one day, and yeah. you'll love this. Okay. They, they say, we throw all of this data into, into the bucket, into Watson, and we wanted to answer a completely arbitrary question without proper training, right? Without interaction. They just, they said, okay, wait, wait, wait. I said, how long does it take for a human being to learn to be a doctor? Well, how much experience? How much trial and error? Mm -hmm. Well, it, it costs a lot of money. I said, oh, yeah, great. Okay, well, when you put that into a system, you expect the system to do a better job than a human being, number <laughs> one. But number two, you got to look at it and say, well, what is the value of having trained a system and spent perhaps millions of dollars training a system? The value is scalability. Exactly. And ongoing learning. Now I can bring that knowledge into areas of the world where thousands of professionals exactly. can benefit from it. Exactly. You tell me how valuable think that about is. This. Think about this. Right now, all cancer specialists who are doing diagnosis, yes. who are doing uh, you know, treatment of cancer, okay? they're all gaining their own experience. They're all gaining their own individual knowledge with every single diagnosis and treatment. I know where you're going. But the thing is, what happens <laughs> is with AI, we can have one single cloud that has all the experience all the knowledge. So every time, say, someone's diagnosed in Canada, someone in, I don't know, Dubai can benefit from that knowledge. Yes. An entirely different doctor, entirely different hospital, entirely different method, but still, they're benefiting from the fact that someone in Canada was treated by that AI. Are, are you telling me, you know, being rhetorical here, that we can build collective knowledge and benefit from it? Quite literally, yes. There you go. Exactly. And, that, and that's beautiful because as humans, right, 
we and you talk about patterns, right? Mm -hmm. our, our organism, our system is yeah. unified in order to be stronger. Exactly. We build city to be stronger. Exactly. We build network. And you know what's beautiful about mm -hmm. that? Just like neural network, just like the yeah. own brain. It's funny how every time two entities can communicate, the sum of the value is higher. It's much, much higher. higher. I mean, exactly. people talk about IoT connected oh, devices. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine? I mean, the whole reality as well wow. is that connected devices, the mm -hmm. fact that they're connected, yeah. give them their own governance, their own yeah. cognitive awareness exactly. that we don't need to comprehend as individuals, like the same way that the cells in your body don't understand what you're thinking, but they're participating in the equation. Exactly. Why do we have to think that every time we need to be involved in every artificial cognitive system? Oh yeah. You know, oh, it's silly, yeah. isn't it? Uh, exactly. Because it's it's but it's nature. It so now we're unifying. This is what I love when exactly. you said this. Uh, Our knowledge is converging, we're unifying and technology and, is yeah, nobler. Exactly. If you take a look at this, why are humans so great? It's because we can communicate with each other in such a natural way mm -hmm. and we can actually transfer knowledge from one person to another really quickly. Right. Really, really quickly. But it's a common trail, right? Uh, exactly. There you and go. so that's 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 why mm -hmm. humans are so you know great at you know sharing knowledge. We're so great at uh, preserving knowledge for literally years and you know gaining experience. But the thing is, that's limited in a way, mm -hmm. right? Like as I mentioned, going back to the example of Canada, and Dubai. If a can if a doctor learns something in Canada, right, teaches a few other doctors, that remains limited to the area. It remains limited to wherever those doctors go, wherever they teach. But with AI, that's not limited at all. What if we could take the fact that humans can communicate with each other and share their knowledge to the next level. What if we could make it so that AI doesn't need to share knowledge, it's just one individual AI that does cancer treatment and diagnosis. Right, and it's right. part, and it's the sum of all the exactly. knowledge. All the knowledge that it gains every single time. And this is where we're going, really. Honestly, I mean, exactly. everybody's got to realize this is when we talk about pattern detection, looking at large data set, the fact that the system can remember, oh, yeah. the fact that the system can aggregate, the fact that the loop feedback, that the learning mechanism improves. I mean, yeah. I don't want to be metaphysical here, oh, yeah. but yeah. but we are capturing the the in a, in a very sustainable and long term way the essence of human cognitives and capacity exactly. for the service of humans. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know? absolutely. And this is what's fantastic. Yeah. So back to the beginning here, <laughs> right? Yes. Pattern detection, fundamental. We do it organically. Mm -hmm. Technology enables us to actually, well, act on it and, and, and converge it. Mm -hmm. When the pattern changes, when something is different, if we have an alert, we can act on it, mm -hmm. right? Exactly. We can observe the movement over time. Ah. It is fantastic. It, it is a true is. human augmentation. Oh, it t completely is. Right? Uh, in fact, more examples. Uh, sure. now, let's just say, right, there are tons of stock traders all over the world, literally, you know, hundreds of thousands. Yes. But only some of them are really experienced, really seasoned, right? And Be careful, you're going to spill a secret here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go for it. Let's spill the beans. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is a conversation. It's hey, private, right? Exactly. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, go for it. All right. So, um, there are tons of stock traders. Yes. Some of them are really experienced. Over many years, they've gathered experience. These are the stocks you need to buy and sell. You know, they've, 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 they've learned how to recognize patterns in things like stocks. Okay? Yes. But the thing is, the only problem is, it's limited to that individual. They cannot completely distill all of that knowledge that they have and give it to another person. True. Exactly. So, what if we were to use AI to do automatic stock trading? In fact, in, in the US, I believe over 70% of stock uh, trading done on US based stock exchanges yeah. uh, in 2014 was mm -hmm. all done by bots. Yeah. Yeah. So, what if we could have, you know, again, that one central AI that eventually learns all these patterns? It doesn't need to share any knowledge with other AIs. It's just one AI that continuously learns and learns and learns. But that's the AI you want to keep in a box in the basement, yeah. right? And yeah. throw some voltage at it. Yeah. Because that's the distinction, right? Unfortunately, you know, our, we still operate around a model of. Mm -hmm failures and success to exactly. evolve and necessity is a necessity oh, right absolutely. i mean otherwise we wouldn't be doing what we're doing oh, today yeah, yeah. but the point is what you're saying you're absolutely right there's this wealth of knowledge but i think that think the expert in your case yeah and the, you bring the insight and you reveal the patterns of data you reveal the anomalies mm -hmm. right and you turn that into something that they can use to make better decision to yeah. give them a competitive advantage mm -hmm. Now, the same way that we talk about normalizing patterns and whatnot, yeah. 
Can you imagine if everybody had the same tool, the market would no longer be a market oh, speculation. Yeah, exactly. It would be, oh my, oh, we, we, would have to think, we would have to think of something completely different because yeah, exactly. everybody exactly. would we be doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. so, so, so in some <laughs> cases, in some yeah, cases. it defeats a purpose, but the example is absolutely right because eventually mm -hmm. this is what can happen oh, yeah. and eventually it will happen, exactly. right? Because of the shared knowledge capabilities. Exactly. So, exactly. So this is fun. So we have we have a lot of examples we could be talking about. Yeah. We're talking about the stock market, we're talking about healthcare, mm -hmm. talking about driving cars, oh, yeah. talking about collective knowledge and looking at the movement of memories mm -hmm. in the organization. Yeah. You know, it's like a great example when you talk about that convergence yes. is two entities, mergers and acquisition. One company has all this data, all this knowledge, and we can abstract it to make it useful and, and, and mine and accessible. Mm -hmm. And then you have another company who's got life right mm -hmm. they just acquired it yeah. and something over here happens that is unusual and guess what it matches with something over here that happened 10 years ago mm -hmm. we can draw just like your memories yeah exactly. I can draw from that knowledge like when I see this it reminds me when my mom used to make eggs uh, you know a cook uh, oh, a, yeah. a cook a five minute eggs oh, okay. and she would go like this it was five <laughs> minutes my egg was done right so my correlation was this is most probably different than yours yeah because age different, yeah, right? So I've got different baggage. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the fact is that I correlated that. Same thing with enterprises. Mm -hmm. They acquire this knowledge, it's collective, exactly. and they can bring it out and say, well, this is meaningful for me right now. I do a merger and acquisition. Gosh, I didn't know that you did stem cell research 20 years ago. The government rules change. Mm -hmm. That's an emerging pattern. Exactly. Right? It's a change. Well, exactly. can we match that change as a memory, as a trigger, to see what we did in the past and elevate all the entities associated okay. with it? That's what we do every day. Why can't organization do it with actually the data they store in yeah. their archives, which to me, you know what it is, it's a graveyard of knowledge. Oh, yeah. Graveyard yeah. of knowledge. So much knowledge, just doing nothing, oh. sitting in that archive. It, yeah. It's silly. It, it is. It's it silly, is. but yeah. it was the reality of things. Yeah. Now, now it changes, the exactly. pattern changed. Now exactly. people with technology are saying, wow, maybe there's something I can really do with this. Exactly. The exactly. value is in there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, exactly. And actually, two more great examples that I think are really, uh, really bringing that point of pattern recognition with AI. First of all, cancer. Yes. There is literally hundreds upon hundreds of pages of literature coming on cancer every single week. Yes. Li thousands of pages, thousands of uh, you know, papers, all these sorts of things. And the thing is, humans cannot keep up with it. Physically impossible for us to read through all of that and not just read through it, but understand all of it and apply it. Make use totally. of it. Exactly. Yeah. But then again, technology, it can only store all that information. But with AI, not only do we store that info, we make sense of it and use that info. It can take all the important stuff that we're you know, going through, uh, all the important stuff that we create, and then understand it and make use of that information. Oh, and interact with it very naturally. Exactly. An, an expert can go ahead and ask a question, exactly. and they'll get they'll get some answers exactly. based on the analysis. It's brilliant. Really, it is very brilliant. It is really brilliant. Yeah. And also another great example, uh, which relates to this, is actually I, I don't remember the name of the company. I will put a link to that in the description, though. Mm -hmm. They were in Australia and New Zealand. They did something I believe with uh, mining or, or oil, something of that sort. Um, and, and so what they were thinking of doing is you know collaborating with IBM uh, and actually taking most of their knowledge bases, most of their knowledge sets. Uh, um, you know, feeding it to Watson and replacing a good fraction of their workforce, just, just like that, okay? Mm -hmm. But what they found out was that when they added AI to the equation, they didn't remove any workers, they added more. But they because they patient. realized, exactly, what they realized is that we don't need to be as strict now with hiring people because now all of our workers have access to the same knowledge, have access to the same knowledge in an easy way. AI is able to take all that knowledge and distill it down and make it so easy for us humans to access and query that knowledge. And as a matter of fact, especially in the oil industry, I think you're talking about the example on the oil rig and the, uh, the deep sea exploration, yeah, yeah, is that I, the one? I believe so. It might be, yeah. right? But the beautiful part about this, and the oil industry is, is one company that uses a lot of contractors, one, you know, yeah. depending on the market and depending on, on the resource allocations, and they often lose them, and there's been a huge knowledge attrition in this industry, especially in Louisiana and Texas. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a different move, the different, the different uh, movement in the, in, the, uh, in the price and the resources, availability, and all that. So these guys come in and out, exactly. you know, in the field, and they lose the knowledge, the notes that they take, oh, the yeah. notes. Is, so, yeah. so knowledge, knowledge acquisition, exploitation, usage, you know, in a way to remedy against knowledge attrition is great, but, but here's the thing that's fun. Yes. You know, you, you've seen it. 
how many people say, oh my gosh, AI is going to replace my job, it's going <laughs> to, and, and, and we hear it all the time, right? Oh, yeah. and it's tons all the, and tons of people. Everyone right. has this fear, because the thing is, right. uh, I, I forgot where I exactly heard this, uh, but I'll put a link to that in the description as well. Uh, but, you know, artificial intelligence, one of the reasons that it's so uh, hard to develop with is because before AI even existed, everyone expected things from AI. Everything, everyone thought they knew what exactly AI can do. Mm -hmm. right? They saw these movies, they saw these TV shows, it's going to replace us, it's going to you know, kill us all, it's going to do something, right. something bad. Right. Right? They already had that type of expectation set, and so now that we're actually developing AI, they're like, oh, okay, so now it's here. It's, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, and this is the thing, the reality is that just like the example you gave, it doesn't mean that we are losing people, we augment people. Exactly. We make them more knowledgeable so they can make better decisions. Exactly. And, and, and it's true, I mean, automation in the, has, has taken a lot of jobs from people. Oh, yeah. But you know what I think really is funny? What? It's the people today yeah. who had the fear about AI are yeah. the ones who are making the decisions <laughs> by AI. So, so before they made decisions that yeah. affected people who were in the factories, mm -hmm. now they're making decisions around knowledge, around their jobs. Exactly. And somehow they feel that, oh my gosh, I can do a lot more exactly. with it, right? Exactly. So it's, it's, it, it's, I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's humorous in some way, yeah. but fundamental back to what we were saying. Mm -hmm. yes. And I think we're, we're about to wrap up. This, this, this wonderful conversation, this cafe, I think we're about there, right? I and I think we have a meeting to run to, too, about, about just this particular topic. Oh, that's right. So I think it's important just for people to really understand. Mm -hmm. It is wonderful mm -hmm. when an organic model, yeah. like pattern detection, like cognitive science, is actually the foundation mm -hmm. of a technological representation and abstraction. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that makes it intimate between exactly. us and the technology. Exactly. It means the technology can start to do things mm -hmm. we expect ourselves to be able to exactly. do. Exactly. What a wonderful connection that represents. Oh yeah. So think of AI, just what we were talking about mm -hmm. this cafe. AI without pattern detection is not AI. And embrace it because what? I truly believe that it is a true transposition of mm -hmm. something that is innate in exactly. every one of us and it only makes sense. Completely. Right? I completely agree. Right. So that was the first episode of AI Cafe. Thank you everyone for joining in today. Uh, this was fun. Thank you very much, Gary, for joining in today. Uh, really hope all of you enjoyed this uh, this new series. Uh, we're gonna be doing some more of these very soon as well. Uh, so again, thank you very much everyone for joining in today. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, uh, please leave it down in the comment section below. You can email it to me at tajimani.gmail.com uh, or you can tweet it to me at tajimani. Apart from that, Thierry, uh, how would you like people to contact you? If they want oh, to? they can contact me directly at darwinecosystem.com or Thierry at DarwinEcosystem.com. Be Perfect. happy to continue the conversation. Exactly. All right? Well, thank you, Perfect. Tenme, again. <laughs> wonderful, fun conversation. Thank you no computer, much. no keywords. <laughs> no keyboards, I mean. Oh my God, uh, keywords, a lot of them moving in oh, patterns. Yeah. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you very you, much, Tenme. everyone. Goodbye.